what is going on YouTube it's Joey here with another video um, we are doing a mock draft updated um, two rounds you got the 49ers at 3 the Eagles trading back at 12 you got the Dolphins at 6 so um, yeah I'm gonna try to make this as accurate as possible there might be some trades I don't know I'm gonna go through and think about it um, do what I think is best for each team um, yeah let's get into it um, feel free to like and subscribe uh, as you can already see I have Trevor Lawrence going at one um, so yeah everyone has this everyone mocks this he's the best quarterback in the class a really polished quarterback prospect he has great size he's the perfect height he has a good arm he's really accurate he's really smart and he's nfl ready probably the most nfl ready day one to start under new head coach urban meyer um he's going to have marvin jones lavisca chanel James Robinson, a nice little offense uh, as a rookie. Um, so yeah, Trevor Lawrence at one. Uh, they're going to move on from Gardner Minshew. Sad Minshew. I'd love to see him go to a good situation with talent around him because, you know, I think Min Minshew Magic could do something with that. Um, but at number two, the New York Jets. This is going to be a quarterback, and this is going to be Zach Wilson. As you can see, the positives, he's smart, um, he has good poise, he can command an offense, he, um, he's athletic, he has a good sense of timing, he senses the rush, he's still poised, he can get the ball downfield, he can throw the ball in the run, get out of the pocket. He, he has everything you want in an NFL quarterback. A lot of people like Zach Wilson. This quarterback class is really deep with Trevor Lawrence, Zach Wilson, Justin Fields, Trey Lance. They're all very good, and it's really difficult to rank them because they all have a lot of upside and could be great franchise quarterbacks. And you even have guys like Mac Jones and... Um, who's all also could be a good franchise QB. You have Kellen Mond, you have Kyle Trask, developable guys. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of quarterbacks in this class that could end up being franchise QBs. The negatives here, he doesn't have great stature and he does not drive the deep throws with speed and occasionally uh, throws off his back foot and um, may struggle against withstanding the rush and has an injury history. But positives outweigh the negatives. He's the second best quarterback. Zach Wilson goes to the Jets. Now the 49ers today have traded up. And they traded up to get their franchise QB. And two QBs already went off the board. This one has to be Justin Fields. Justin Fields to the 49ers. Um, he's got great athleticism, has a big arm, next level arm. Uh, he's tough. He can play through injuries. You saw that versus Clemson. Um, he can throw on the run, throw down the field. What he struggles with is getting the ball out in time and sometimes stuck with his reads, but in a good system like the Shanahan system, and if the team around him can stay healthy, they could be really good when Justin Fields develops. And if he has like a Justin Herbert rookie type year, this team could be back in the Super Bowl swing. Like they, George Kittle, Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, um, they brought back Trent Williams. They have a great defense. They have a lot of running backs. Mostert went healthy can use his speed to really take over the game. So they need a quarterback. They won a lot of games with um, Jimmy Garoppolo, but they feel like the next step is staying healthy. And today, while trading up to this spot, it's got to be Justin Fields. So now you're at four with the Falcons. 
and a lot of people mock Justin Fields to the Falcons. But you're in an interesting spot here. You could take Kyle Pitts, who is a versatile weapon, who a lot of people love, who is like a wide receiver in a tight end's body, can move around and make plays. But they need stuff for the future. And this might be my first trade here. I'm really thinking about it. Um... The Broncos could jump the pant. See, this is where it gets interesting because you have the Broncos who need a quarterback, the Panthers who need a quarterback. Um, I think the Broncos, in this scenario, I'm going to have... I'm going to have them trading back with the Broncos. Um, let's see here. What would be a good thing? Because the Falcons, I think this is a win-win for both teams. I'm trying to incorporate trades in here. So they would obviously trade these two. Um, Denver would have to give up a first from next year. They could give a fourth. A f Wait, first, second, third, fourth. Fifth, um, yeah, and like a third next year. All right, so now you have the Broncos who trade all the way up, and they're going to get their quarterback of the future in Trey Lance, um, who's got great athletic ability. Um, has a lot of things you like in a quarterback. Um, yeah, this one might be a little bit wild. The Panthers are lawed man out. Um, the Falcons just restructured Matt Ryan's contract to where it's bigger cap hit down the future. Um, bigger guarantee money. So, and with Justin Fields already off the board, Trey Lance... Yeah, this one, this one's it's it's hard to predict this um, coming draft. But the Bengals here, they have to take Sewell at five. Um, you could argue him, uh, Rashawn Slater as a better, as the top two. Maybe you could argue Rashawn Slater is better than Penny Sewell, but he's just gonna come in there right away and just help this offensive line and protect Joe Burrow because that's what they need to do. You know, they could go Jamar Chase um, and reunite him with Joe Burrow um, because they have T. Higgins on the outside. They have Tyler Boyd in the slot. They're kind of missing that number two receiver, or Chase could even become the number one over Higgins. But offensive line help is desperately needed in Cincinnati. It helps them run the ball better. It helps their offense run better. It helps Joe Burrow. He's the future of their team. Has to happen. So the Dolphins are at six. And they also need offensive line. Kyle Pitts is still here. Um, They could go him. But they could go Jamar Chase. They could have... But I think if Will Fuller can stay healthy, they'll have Devontae Parker and Preston Williams, Mike Gesicki. Um, I think they're fine there. I think they need offensive line more, especially now moving on from Isaiah Wilson. Rashad Slater's a great prospect out of Northwestern. And I'm going to have to go Rashad Slater here. It. These teams up here need quarterback, offensive line. These these teams really need offensive help. And Tua needs some more protection. Rashawn Slater can give that to him. So at seven, the Lions, I think they could go Jamar Chase still. But Heisman winner Devontae Smith, I feel like they would take him because... Um, He's a um, great 
The only thing he doesn't have is he doesn't have the body type. He doesn't have the strength. But he has great run route running. And he can be used in the slot, which the Lions need. The Lions don't have any wide receivers right now. No more Kenny Galladay. No more um, Marvin Jones. They have Tyrell Williams as their best receiver. So he he's the type of guy that can make an impact day one. Great route running. Can be great, um, great production. Great release off the line. Um, can get separation. I think he goes to the Lions here. Um, kind of a surprise, but now you have the Panthers here who really wanted their quarterback. They could go Mac Jones, but I think they would trade back here to and still try to get Mac Jones. So I'm this trade that I had. It, it every single thing you do just changes the whole draft. So, the Panthers are going to want to trade back. Um, or actually, who would want to trade up? Um, who would want to trade up? Um, I think they would trade back at like 13 or... All right, I think was their team ready now? I think they would trade back with the the Chargers or the Vikings. Who's more? I think yeah, I think they would trade back with the uh, Chargers. So we're gonna have the Chargers trading up. Uh, Panthers trading back. Um, trades with the Chargers. All right. So eight for thirteen, and the Chargers would probably have to give up a first next year and a fourth. Oh, well, it's gonna decline my trade, so I guess I'm gonna have to do it this way. Uh, where is the Panthers? All right, so I'm going to have to do it this way. There we are. Um, you have to give up more to move up. I think that's a fair trade. They give their first round pick this year, a first round pick next year, and a fourth rounder. All right, so the Chargers trade up. I mean, it kind of seems stupid now that I think about it. But maybe they want to jump the Vikings or the Giants for some O-line help. Um, they could go Kyle Pitts here. For They got Jerry Cook, though, but Jerry Cook's old. But they need Elijah Vera Tucker. He can play everywhere. And protecting Herbert, it's going to be a priority. So they're gonna do that. Uh, the trades, yeah, I know there's trades gonna happen on draft night. I just don't know which ones are gonna happen. Nobody knows that these trades today were very unexpected. But the Falcons still waiting at nine. They go Kyle Pitts. Um, that tight end room is not that good at all. It's not. Um, Hayden Hurst is okay, but they don't really have anything outside of that. Kyle Pitts could take this offense to another level. They need a lot of defensive help, but they just got some capital to kind of try to get those guys to help build it up. But him, um, Calvin Ridley, Julio Jones, who knows if he's going to stick around, Matt Ryan. That could be an explosive offense. And with the 49ers trading up today, and um, they're in a rebuild. They restructured Matt Ryan's contract. There's, I, don't, I don't know if they go quarterback. Um, seems it's, it's very interesting. It's going to get very wild draft night 
it's really difficult to predict. But one that may be easier to predict is the Dallas Cowboys draft pick. And that is going to go to Mr. Patrick Sertan, who is the most polished cornerback prospect out of this class, especially after Caleb Farley's injury. That back injury is significant because many had Caleb Farley as the best corner in the class. I did too. I liked the physicality. I liked the speed. I liked his technique. Um, I thought he could match up with the speedier guys a little bit better. But that back injury, like, that's going to hurt his stock. But Patrick Sertan has really great physicality, really good um, really good technique. And the Cowboys are in need of help on that defensive line in that corner. And Patrick Sertan, one of the best players available, one of the best players in the draft class. So you have the Giants here. Just got Kenny Galladay. Just... Um, <clears throat> Just got Adore Jackson. They need offensive line help. <laughs> All of these teams need O line help. But Christian Darasaw, Elijah Vera Tucker, or no, not Christian Darasaw, Rashawn Slater, Penny Sewell, Elijah Vera Tucker, all off the board. So the Giants here, I think they. They would go Christian Darsa. They kind of reached for Andrew Thomas last year. They might reach again for an offensive lineman. Uh, they traded away Kevin Zeitler, too, so that's really the biggest need for me there. They got weapons at the skill position. Later on in the draft, they could get a pass rusher, but yeah, I think they would go Darsa here. So the Eagles trade back, but Jamar. Chase is still here. They have to go Jamar Chase in a team really needy of a wide receiver. Gotta go Jamar Chase. He is the most polished prospect in the class. Great weapon for Jalen Hurts. I say um, you stick with Jalen Hurts because kids showed some potential but had some bad games, had some bumps in the road. But he didn't really have anything to work with. He was running around from that offensive line. Didn't have anyone but Dallas Goddard to throw to. Dude, had Jalen Rigor, J.J. Arkega whiteside like, and of Wash Deshaun Jackson. Like, who did he have to throw to? So Jamar Chase, I think, would make a great difference day one. The Panthers, they're bumming right now, but I think they got to take Mac Jones here. Um, these quarterbacks are fine off the board, but it is a deep quarterback class, but after four, it kind of drops a little bit. Mac Jones can still be a great NFL quarterback. He could still be a franchise quarterback. He lacks mobility, just but tell that to Tom Brady, you know. Um, Alabama's scheme is when you're playing for Nick Saban, you have all these great receivers, you can look good, but Mac Jones is smart, he can, um, he's a good pocket passer, can get the short game going and stuff, so, you know, they traded back, they got some things for the future, um, yeah, Mac Jones will be their franchise quarterback, mm, I think, the Vikings here, uh, they need offensive line, but they just traded for Mason Cole, and who's not good, by the way. Um, but they would kind of be reaching if they went offensive line here. Jalen Waddle is still here, but they they just got Justin Jefferson. They have Adam Thielen. Like, uh, what does this team need? This team could use corner, they could very well go with J.C. Horn, but knowing the Vikings, they just got, um, they just got, um, Jace, or they just got Patrick Peterson, 
Um, so, um, yeah, um, I think they would go, um, I think they need an edge rush help the most here. Um, I think Quiddy Pay would be an intriguing option. Gregory Rousseau is just too, he's too raw of a prospect. He's way too raw of a prospect. Um, Aziz Ojolari is an interesting one, but I think they would go Quiddy Pay out of Michigan. Pair him with Daniel Hunter, especially with all the controversy that is going on with Daniel Hunter. Um, him wanting a new contract and everything. So I think they would go Quiddy Pay here. The Patriots. Don't, they are not going to reach for quarterback. They just got Cam Newton. They like Cam Newton. Um, but Jalen Waddle is still here on the board. That's who you go with. Um, compare him with Nelson Aguilar. Um, Jalen Waddle's got that freaky speed. That freaky speed. That big playability. Jalen Waddle could be really good. He could be the best receiver in this draft class. Um, yeah, I think he would pair well in that Patriots offense, give them something they were missing. I like that pick. And J.C. Horn slides all the way to the Arizona Cardinals, which is huge. I think J.C. Horn, with his pro day, plus the Caleb Farley injury, boost his stock to the number two corner in the draft class. I think that's what happens because J.C. Horn can play the ball great. He's got great ball skills. Um, he could be really good, really solid. Um, the Cardinals are in need of a corner. They got Malcolm Butler, who had a bounce back year last year, but it's a one year deal, one year cheap deal. Um, Robert Alford is it's, it's he's not gonna cut it as your number two outside corner, and J.C. Horn could just slide in there. Alford could be for depth rotation. Um, yeah, and you pair him with Malcolm Butler, Byron Murphy, pretty good corners with Buda Baker, Jalen Thompson. That secondary could be one of the better ones in the league if J.C. Horn falls, and I think it would just be. The Cardinals' dream pick. Now, if J.C. Horn isn't here for Arizona, they should definitely be trading back. They should definitely trade back. But um, he's really athletic, great size, great flick, flipping his hips, um, feisty. He's everything the Cardinals need to replace Patrick Peterson as their number one franchise corner long term. Malcolm Butler is going to be their number one corner short term. The Raiders. Uh, alrighty then. The Raiders. They really need offensive line. But again, reaching for that is not good. Uh, they could trade back. They could trade back. Um, but like, who would they trade back with? Like, maybe the Jets trade up to jump the Titans. Or, no, the, J hold up. No, I think what would happen is the Steelers, ooh, the Steelers could trade up to try to jump the Colts. Or, no, I think the Colts have to trade up here. To jump the football team for um, for this, but actually they might not do that. They could use a guy like Micah Parsons. There's all these guys here, all these great defensive guys. Micah Parsons has off the field issues, which could hurt his draft stock. If Jeremiah Wusu Kormoa doesn't mm, he's really explosive linebacker, really versatile. Um, this is this is really tough. 
He's a great linebacker. I think he's better prospect than Micah Parsons because he doesn't have the off the field issues and he's still an outstanding player. Raiders need that kind of guy that can do everything on defense and they're not they shouldn't reach for an offensive lineman at this point. Number 18, the Dolphins already got their offensive lineman. They've just been fleecing everybody. <laughs> It's really insane. Um, but I think they need to add some more to that pass rush. And Aziz Ojolari, I think, would do just that for the Dolphins. They lose Shaq Lawson. They could pair him opposite Emmanuel Ogba um, and try to, you know, just build up that defense, uh, help out that secondary with that pass rush. Ojolari's my pick there. Um, football team. They're in need of a linebacker. Michael Parsons still sitting here. Um, but they need offensive line, man. They need it. But Darasaw and, hmm, let's see, tackle, they really need that. They could use Samuel Cosme here out of Texas. I left tackle, and I think that's what they're going to do. Mm, but do they? Ooh, that's why I think the Colts should have traded up. That's what I think. But I think they're going to go Samuel Cosme. They have to prioritize that offensive line. For Carson Wentz, you saw what happened with the bad one in Philadelphia. Dude was a turnover machine. Dude was just turning the ball over. Dude was under pressure. Um, oh, I'm talking about the Colts. Yeah, that's later down the line. Spoiler, I'm going to have them going offensive line. But um, offense and tackle, Samuel Cosme, they need a guy on that offensive line. It wasn't good. It will help Fitzpatrick. It will help the run game. It just helps the offense. It gives the offense more time um, to throw the ball. It gives the offense more opportunities to have better run lanes. Um, so Cosme, I think at 19, would be a good pick. Now the Bears at 20. Um, Allen Robinson is on the franchise tag. They don't really have any wide receivers. And I think Rashad Bateman goes to the Bears. Um, he can make an impact on the field. Would be a nice compliment for this year for Andy Dalton to Allen Robinson. Um, there's just no quarterback worth taking here. <laughs> so their next biggest need and reaching for an offensive lineman probably isn't the best thing to do. Um, He's got a lot of good things to his game uh, and could be their receiver after Robinson leaves. So you got the Colts, and I was just talking about it. They need a tackle. And Jalen Mayfield's more like a right tackle. They need a left tackle because their left tackle retired and that's Tevin Jenkins. They're going to reach, but they have to. They could trade back. My offensive line, we need teams like the Steelers, you know. I don't think that would be that good. Not good of an idea for them. The Titans at 22. They lost to Dory Jackson. Lost Malcolm Butler. So now at corner... They have Janoris Jenkins as their number one, who isn't a bad corner, but Christian Fulton at two, and they don't really have anything else outside of that. Cornerback is a need for this team. Receiver is a need too, but Tannehill, Henry, Brown, I think that trio can keep the offense together. I think corner is a bigger need. Um... Farley is still here. It's so tough with his injury, though. They could go Newsome, but... Ooh, yeah, this is tough. I think they go Farley here. 
and the Jets cornerback room is so bad. It's so bad. Um, yeah, they they don't have anyone, anyone. So they need corner for Robert Sala's defense. Greg Newsom is here. Um, great feel for coverage. Nice size. Um, feisty with the receivers. Competes defending the pass. Can fluid flipping his hips. Good transition. Can read diagnose. He's instinctive. Gets his head back around to locate the ball. Nice move. Solid ball skills. He was a good corner at Northwestern, and he can start at the next level. Speed is a concern, but I think Newsham could be a good corner for that Jets team. And the best corner available, that's basically who the Jets have to take. At 24, the Steelers. Um, need O-line, and if they have to reach, they have to do it. And Jalen Mayfield's probably the best O-lineman left on the board right now. They could go Creed Humphrey, the center, but mm, he can, um, yeah, you need to protect Big Ben. You need some help in the run game. Pouncey gone. Illinois, but like, yeah, you just need offensive line at this point. Go best one available. Jaguars. Um, this one's tough here. Look at the t look at where I have these guys ranked. Um, what is their biggest need? It says they need QB. We already got that. Safety is a need. Running back, defensive tackle. I think this is where. That's special teams. Um, I think this is where Trayvon Morig goes. Um, he's really versatile to play a lot of different places on the defense. I think this is where Morig goes right here at 25. 26, you have the Cleveland Browns. Um, they need linebacker, and I think this is where Micah Parsons fall stops. Coach of the year, Kevin Stefanski. I think that staff can straighten them out. Got a lot of potential. Can blitz the quarterback, too. They could be in the market for an edge rusher, but that linebacker group is pretty bad and what he brings in the blitz game I think is good for the Cleveland Browns now you have Baltimore at 27 um could go Gregory Rousseau again he needs to go to a, a team he's not going to be the day one starter at least we don't think because he's really raw um but I think they do go next best edge player available. And I think that's Joseph Osai out of Texas. He can be an impact player. They, they need a wide receiver for Lamar Jackson. Could go Kadarius Tony, but like they lost um they lost uh what's his name? Yannick Ngakwe and um and Matt Judon. So It's really tough. They need both positions. But Jackson can still run the offense without a receiver, even though they'd be so much better with one. And I think Joseph Osai, like, they need to keep that defense together. I, I feel like this is what the Ravens would do. They need edge back. The Saints, the Saints have quite a bit of needs. They could use wide receiver outside of Michael Thomas. Linebacker to pair with DeMario Davis. Corner to Janoris Jenkins hole. DT Christian Barmore is still here.
but Kadarius Tony, I'd like to see how they use a guy like this guy in that offense. Athletic skill player, um, can really, you know, be quick with the ball in his hands, can make a lot of defenders miss. Um, he can fight his way back to the ball, extend his hands to offer a quarterback to target. It's great checks. I think they miss a guy like this in their offense. Um, they can use him as a receiver, return specialist, ball carrier. He's projected to be a great number three receiver, but, you know, with Sean Payton's scheme, I think he could be a productive guy with Michael Thomas. Emmanuel Sanders is gone. He's the best receiver left. Got to take him. So the Packers are not drafting wide receiver in the first round. They're probably going to draft one in the second or third round. Um, because they haven't done it for the past 50 million years. <laughs> oh, they're probably not going to go corner either because they just re-signed Kevin King in the first round. They might go corner second round. But Christian Barmore is still on the board. Um, he's great power. He, he could make a great impact next to Kenny Clark. And they really need a guy like that. They could pair him, um, Kingsley Kiki, and Kenny Clark on that defensive line to try to help that front. So I think they go Christian Barmore. It's, they need, that Kenny Clark can't do it by himself. So... Barmore in there. Um, Packers can get a corner receiver. I think he's like best player available at that point. The Bills at 30. Gregory Rousseau is an intriguing option here. Um, what they go Rousseau though? He, he needs to develop, and they need a day one guy to help them reach the Super Bowl. The run game was not a factor last year. Running backs aren't very good. So I think Najee Harris is the best running back in the class. He's still available, end of the first round. I think they take him. Chiefs at 31. Hmm. They could go use Zayvon Collins. They could use tackle, but it would be a massive reach at this point. <laughs> hmm. Could use a guy like Zayvon Collins. Linebacker is pretty weak. They also could use an edge rusher opposite of Frank Clark. Help Chris Jones out too. Um, they really couldn't get any pressure on Tom Brady in the Super Bowl. Uh, while Patrick Mahomes was running every single second of his life. So I think getting Jason Owe is going to help the Chiefs. Um defense quite a bit if you can get to the passer makes it easier on your secondary makes it easier to so the rest of your defense um they add another good ash rusher maybe they get to brady and kind of throw him off his game but yeah brady only got sacked once but he wasn't pressured the whole game tampa bay at 32 i think they go Greg Rousseau, if he's still here. JPP isn't getting any younger. Um, they need some depth at edge. They bring back Shaq Barrett, but Rousseau needs to be in a good team with a good coach, and I think that is exactly 
what he needs. All right, so we are going to be in the second round now. The Jaguars are going to, they already got quarterback safety. Oh man, who do they go with? Hmm. Levi Uzerwake is still here. He's not much of a pass rusher, but they just need a guy in the middle of that defense. Because that run defense allowing Derrick Henry, all those guys, like Unzerwuki in the second round, I think it's a pretty good pick. And the Jets here. Travis Etienne still on the board in the second round. They gotta get him. They don't really have that good of a running back room as of right now. Um, running back's a pretty big need. I think Etienne fills that. Um, pick 35 for Atlanta. I think they gotta go defense here. Saving Collins is still on the board, but Jalen Phillips is still here. I think they gotta take him. Um, that's a big slide. Some may argue Jalen Phillips may be the best edge rusher in the class. Some may say he might be the most ready day one. But he lacks bulk and is controlled at the point by a single blocker. Um struggle with some minor injuries but I think that he could help that Falcons pass rush he has good technique he can get after the quarterback he has a lot of things that could help this pass rush and defense can start with pass rush Jalen Phillips to Miami I mean not Miami um, to Atlanta the Miami Dolphins are on the board next. Um, we already got them O-line, um, edge. Oh, man. They could go Creed Humphrey here for some help in the interior. Um, But wide receiver, they probably might want one more in there. And with Terrace Marshall, get to another weapon. Um, could be good with Will Fuller and Devontae Parker in that scheme. Yeah, I think Terrace Marshall. If, uh, this is a, a round where he would go. The Eagles at 37. They somehow land Jamar Chase trading back at 12 in the first round in this mock. Ooh, here, the Eagles are in need of quite a bit. Um, Cornerback and linebacker is what I'm looking at. It's between Zayvon Collins and Aifetial Meloe Flanu. I don't even know if I said that right. Um... He can impact the game in ooh, small run and chase linebackers, size and speed. I think he's going to be more versatile. I think they go Zayvon Collins. They need a linebacker. The cornerback room needs help. A lot of things on that Eagles team needs help. But Zayvon Collins would be a good pick. The Bengals, the Bengals, the Bengals, the Bengals. Um, yeah, they just, they could use pass rush too. Oh, they could also use offensive line, but I don't think they go on the line again. Um, Ronnie Perkins is still here. I think they, they, 
need edge rusher. They lost Carl Lawson. They replaced him with Trey Hendrickson, but like that's really their only good edge guy. Um, so Ronnie Perkins. Panthers. They went quarterback in the first round. Mac Jones, that's right, they traded back and still got him. Um, corner and tackle, I think with Melua Fanu still here, they got to go with him. It's a little bit of a steal. Um, yeah, he could be a good corner. Pair him opposite of Dante Jackson. Jeremy Chin. Um, Brian Burns, Derek Brown, good young pieces on the defense. Then at 40, the Broncos already got their franchise QB. Um, so now the Broncos. Linebacker edge. Yeah, they could really use linebacker. Baron Browning. Um, I think he could do well in Vic Vangio's defense. The Lions. Hmm. What is their biggest team needs? Um, wide receiver, check. They need linebacker pretty bad, but there is a lot of different holes on this team. Oh, I do not want to trade. Um, um, do they have best player available here? I don't know. Eric Stokes. Eric Stokes still here. And so is Asante Samuel. If he falls, I think they have to take him. Asante Samuel. Um, they don't really have much at corner. Lost Desmond Trufant. He was even good anyways. Um, Jeff Okuda. Disappointing last year. Yeah, I, they need, they've got torched quite a bit in that secondary. Giants. Giants, 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 Giants. We already had them going. Christian Darasaw. So now I think is when they go edge and Carlos Basham is still here. And I think he would help them quite a bit. So Carlos Basham. And they would have a scary front with Basham added in the fold. I'm telling you, Giants have a roster outside of quarterback. I don't like Daniel Jones. Could prove me wrong, but... Danny Dimes can't improve. The 49ers got Justin Fields. Um, with Eric Stokes still here, I think they got to go Eric Stokes. Um, good corner prospect. They bring back Jason Verrett. Um, so, but they don't really have that much else. Richard Sherman still a free agent. So bring back Mosley, but they they really need a corner for now and the future. And Eric Stokes can be that player. The Cowboys. Hmm. Um, we already had him go in corner. And I think with Aleem McNeil. Still on the board, he can. He's very promising. They need someone on that defensive line. So, 
I think he goes to Dallas if he's still there. Jacksonville at 45. All right, they already got a D tackle, a safety, and a corner. So now they need. I think with Pat Fryermith still on the board, you could supply. Um, Trevor Lawrence with one more weapon. Tight end position is pretty weak. Fryermith can block and be a threat in the passing game. Second best tight end in the class. Second round. I think it makes sense. So at 46, the Patriots are going to go. Um, where would they pick? Who would they pick? Um, they already got Jalen Waddle. I think they shouldn't reach for a QB. It's still a reach for a QB. Um, so they brought back James White. They could go Javante Williams. Um, I don't know where they would go. I I think Jake Tufole. I don't know if I said that right. Um, but J2 Filet, um, he can be that guy in the front. Um, yeah, I think they still lack a little bit. Patriots filled a lot of needs in the free agency, though. Chargers already got a line. I don't think they're going to go a line any longer. Or any much more. Um, they need cornerback. Richie Grant is still here. Derwin James can never stay healthy, but um, Aaron Robinson, next best corner in the game or in the draft. Oh my own team needs. Yeah. They lose Casey Hayward. They could use, they lose Desmond King to the Titans last year. They could use a guy like Aaron Robinson, who is a nickel corner, but they can move him around. Um I think he could he has a lot of upside, could have potential. Uh Chargers need corner. Now the Raiders here, I do believe they I had them going. Um linebacker, correct, yes. So now they need offensive line and all the offensive linemen. Now it's not a reach. Now it's more like a steal. Guard, guard, tackle. No more Trent Brown. I think they would go Leatherwood here. Um He's a left tackle, though. Um, actually, um, finishing. I think they would go Wyatt Davis at guard. Trade Gene Jackson. They just, their offensive line is just in shambles. They just need one. I think he's the best one remaining. Cardinals, 49. They got corner. And with Javante Williams still on the board, if they can get Javante Williams and J.C. Horn to fall to them, I think that would be perfect for the Cardinals. Because... Chase Edmonds and Eno Benjamin is currently their one-two bunch. I like Chase Edmonds, but mm, I'm not quite confident he could be the lead back. Um, so a guy like Javante Williams, great pure runner, um, can take some stress off Kyler Murray in the run game or the pass game. Um, could be a really good running back. I love Javante Williams. Could 
has the potential to be the best running back out of this class. He's really strong, great bruiser and ball carrier. Um, he doesn't make defenders miss and lack speed to turn the corner, but I think he would give the Cardinals a change of like style in their offense because Chase Edmonds could be that elusive back, that um, receiving back, and then Javante Williams could be that power back that wears the defense out. So I like this pick for the Cardinals. Um, the Dolphins at 50. Um, geez, the Dolphins have so many draft picks. They got receiver, edge, don't they have one more? Yeah, tackle, edge, receiver, <laughs> Dolphins. If they hit these draft picks, they could become really good. Um, They could use center. Creed Humphrey still here. Best center in the class. He goes here. Centers are not valued, or the least valued position on the offensive line, but Creed Humphrey still here. I like it. Um, the football team. Mm, QB line, linebacker. Yeah, that's linebacker and safety. You still have Richie Grant. Um, but they have Cayman Curl back there. I think a linebacker would suit them a little more. Jabril Cox, I think he can make a difference on that defense. So I'm going to go Jabril Cox to the football team. So you have the Bears coming around the clock, coming around the mountain again. <laughs> Chicago. Um, we already got their wide receiver. Corner is a big need, now that I think about it. They lost Kyle Fuller, but... Where's the next best CD? Elijah Molden. He's, these are third round guys now. Um, yeah, the Bears could use tackle too. Alex Leatherwood. Best one left. Give Andy Dalton some protection. Give him the help he needs to make your offense better. Um, Bears just need a lot of things, but in this draft, they do improve their offense quite a bit. The Titans here could use wide receiver. No more um, Corey Davis, so they could bring in no more Adam Humphreys either. Um, yeah, he could be really good in this offense in the play action. I like Elijah Moore into the Titans. This would be such a steal at this spot. The Colts, mm. <laughs> yeah, they need they need that too. Uh, they need they have all this money and they don't do anything. It's frustrating. Like they got T. Y. Hilton back. Michael Pittman, they like. What would the Colts do? They need. Edge is a pretty big need. Justin Houston is leaving. Um, man. Do you reach for an edge, though? I don't think you do. Jordan Smith's the next best edge player available. I think they need wide receiver. Rondale Moore is still on the board. I think he could be that explosive player they're missing. So I'm going to go Rondell Moore to the Colts. You have the Steelers, who already got offensive line. Yeah, they really need running back, but but that's not there anymore. The top three guys are gone. It'd be a reach if he went another guy. Ooh. Ooh. I guess they go Trey Smith to double down on that O-line, try to create holes for whichever running back 
will be their starter. Running back is the least valuable position in football. Um, on offense or defense, we're not counting special teams or anything. Or on offense, at least. Um, because they can get worn down, can get replaced. But anyways, Seattle brought back Carlos Dunlap. Um, they're letting go, um, Jaron Reed. They lost Shaquille Griffin. They traded for Gabe Jackson, but Dickerson is still here. Liam Eichenberg. The Seahawks, is, um, he is projected to play right tackle at the next level. They already got a good left tackle in Dwayne Brown. But he's getting pretty old. So I think Eichenberg would be the pick here. Around, around where he would go. Um, the Rams. This is also their first draft pick in the draft. Um, yeah, they need someone to help Aaron Donald up front now. Because no more Brockers, I don't think. And no more Ibukov. Oh, man. Jordan Smith is still here. Um, they could use center. But I think Jordan Smith... He's, it's towards the end of the second round talent. He has potential. Next up... Uh, uh, Aaron Donald, I think that would be probably one of the best fits for him. To, I almost drafted them, Dylan Ratnews. No, I'm trying to go um, Jordan Smith. Ravens now have to get receiver. And Amon Ross St. Brown is the best one still there. Um, could be um, take some pressure off Hollywood Brown. He's not really going to be a number one wide receiver, but um, he has the ability and potential to be. But I think, yeah, he really does help this Ravens team. Lamar Jackson needs a wide receiver. And if they could get Osai and Amon Ross St. Brown, I would be great for them. Browns. We already got them. Yeah, there's no more edges here either. Oh, man. Yeah, we already got them linebacker. Um, well, that's pretty interesting. Wow. I think they trade back. Like, I don't know what they do here. Rashad Weaver is the next best guy. I think he could learn a thing or two. Um, I think he can learn a thing or two from Miles Garrett. I think they got him. I think they reach. I it's it's a reach, but it's a position of need. I think he could develop and help this team in the future. The Saints are back here. Um Yeah, they already got the receiver. Um, could use a guy like Richie Grant still here. I think they got to go best player available, and Grant is that guy. Um, Marcus Williams on that franchise tag. I think he could be the guy for the future. Um, Bills here is 61. 
Ooh, this is interesting. This is very interesting. They need edge bad. Do we already have him going? No, we had him go running back. That's right. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, this one's tough. I think Nixion. I think he could help them in the front seven, though. And then this leaves the Packers here. They could go Dickerson as a center. He has injury history, though. Ooh. Yeah, I don't think they'd want a guy that has injury concern. Elijah Molden. Why does it have him as a safety, but it has this cornerback? That's weird. Kelvin Joseph. Um. He's a developmental guy at the next level. But really, like... They could go Rod Dunes. I think they go Dylan Rod Dunes here. It's really tough between those two. But Bontiari is injured. Probably going to miss some of the year next year. Um, they, they'll have to have Turner there at tackle. They could move Jenkins at tackle. They could have Runyon at guard. Hanson at center, like Patrick at guard. But then if one of those guys gets hurt, like the the depth is pretty bad. And they could use a guy like Ron Dunes and develop him and have him as a starter. It's really tough between him and Kelvin Joseph. But you could go either one. Uh, but I just chose Ron Dunes. Um, the Chiefs went edge, now they go linebacker, Nick Bolton, um, yeah, he's a really good linebacker that can be great in Spagnuolo's defense, and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers just re-signed, um, Leonard Fournette, so I don't think they go Carter here, um, boy, like, what do the Buccaneers even need? They don't have any need. Running back is not a need now. They have Jones and Fournette. They just re-signed them. Like, I don't know, bruh. Like, I guess they take in, um, they take in, uh, Elijah Molden Mm. Yeah, and try to develop him. So that is going to be my two-round mock draft. It was really tough. I put a lot of thought into it. It was my first mock draft on the channel. Hope you guys enjoyed. It was more of a informational, um, analyzed thing. Had some trades in the first round. It could be totally off. It could be somewhat accurate. I did my best. I'm not really the greatest expert when it comes to evaluating players in the draft. Um, but yeah, that's going to do it for this video. Um, hope you all enjoyed. See you guys in the next one. Working on more content. Let me know what other videos you'd like to see down below. Um, updated one with the big trades today. Decided to go two rounds. Pretty long video, but see you guys in the next one.